All right, welcome back to the Dymap channel. I'm Chris Bilton, I'm a jeweler from the UK. I have over 20 years experience making high-end bespoke pieces. Uh, I married a Japanese lady, so now I'm in Japan. So I've left that life now. I'm no longer employed as a professional jeweler, although I've still got all my skills. So I've got my own little setup here at home and I'm making jewelry making instructional videos on YouTube. So if you uh, like this video or you go through my other videos, please subscribe and it helps with the YouTube algorithms to sort of spread the word and spread the knowledge of hand making jewelry. How professional does it? Because uh, it does appear to me, because I'm new to looking at jewelry online, only for like just over a year now, but doing these videos. And my motivation was not seeing anything being done properly or how, how I was taught. It's always um, like the way I've been pushed to make jewelry is to be really accurate, work with minimal wastage, uh, get things completed with a minimal amount of time, uh, a finished piece has to be sort of done on the first attempt with not covered in all solder joins, have to be a bit clever about how it's done. Uh, didn't, didn't, wasn't seeing any of that online when I was looking, first of all. So that's a bit of my motivation for this channel is just to show everyone what, how, how I do it, how I've been taught. And uh, I've been fortunate to be taught by some very skillful uh, people. Uh, so yeah, spreading on the knowledge, putting it out there for many years to come. Right. Uh, yeah, this show is a beginner's guide to making jewellery. I want to focus on digital calipers and they're really important for making things accurately. If you look through my videos, I'm always checking things, checking my angles, distances and stuff with these. Uh, I think you should have them, especially if you want to follow the way I make jewellery because um, these feature pretty much in every single video I make. Uh, yeah, so I'll just talk about them a little bit. So, to state the obvious, they measure stuff to hundreds of a mil. And you can hand make things accurate to a hundredth of a mil, and it's a really tiny amount. Uh, there are tolerances though, I'd say uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.03 uh, isn't really visible to the naked eye when something's got to go down the middle perfectly. If it's slightly off, like that amount, that amount, uh, you get away with it. But when you get 0 0.05, especially 0 0.1 of a mil, like it's uh, going to start seeing things looking wrong. So. 100 of a mil I think is actually it's really accurate and I think it's actually a good a good difficult thing to achieve but it is possible so um like for instance like say this is a sort of half a, a ring it's the ring shank I made for something ages ago um if I wanted to get this perfectly same depth all the way around like I measure it that way 1.85 go across the other side 1.83 so it's kind of similar but not not the same and I can now with my file just take it down a little bit get it get it just right so if you want to get things really perfect you need these because i can't lay a ruler over the top of that i just would never line it up nicely or get to see it as accurately as that and obviously this is just instant instant measurement as well so it's good for that um other things yeah say i want to measure it's a bad example of something you would measure like this but obviously you've got these that push outwards give you a measurement rather than these that squeeze inwards and give you a measurement that's useful also another thing i want to point out the other end of these yeah when you when i open them up that sticks out there that could be useful as well and I'll give you an example this is a pendant i made in a video recently if you look through my videos uh it was a pendant um that could be a ring top on a shank like that, kind of, if that was just flat across the back. So say that was a, say that's a ring, yeah? Let's see if I can hold this in position. Say that's a ring and I was, I was put in, I made that piece and then I made the shank and I wanted to put them together now. When I'm lining it up, I would zero it and then with that, open it up and then push it closed. That would give me a measurement on how far that is sticking out. That's preferable to trying to get that in there and line that up. And obviously do the other side, if you get it directly halfway. You can get quite an accurate position set for before you solder something up. When these first come out, yeah, like in the 90s, they were so expensive. They're like 100 quid each. Um, this is my second one. This is quite a new one. The other one I had was one of those 100 quid ones from ages ago. It lasted forever. But um, it just start the batteries... Um, the screen went dim and then the battery wasn't lasting very long at all. It just seemed to drain the power. It used to just always be flashing and then go off. So I was always changing batteries. Uh, and then in the end, it just packed up. It started going faulty, just reading numbers wrong. 
so they do blow up eventually, but my experience is they last a very long time. And this one seems okay. Uh, they usually got this big battery on. That's a three volt lithium Indonesian battery. Uh, what I do is I write on there with a marker pen, just the date because I'm a nerd and I like when I have to change a battery, I like to know how long it lasted. I do the same with my little gas canisters as well. I write the date on them when they're new. So just so when they run out, I can go, ooh, two months or whatever. <laughs> Prices are right down, by the way. They're like 20, 30 quid, 20, 30 dollars, whatever. Um, yeah, not a lot. They've also, this little screw thing as well, just tightens it up. So if I wanna, if I wanna say, use that instead of dividers, yeah, you know about dividers where you can like use an edge and score a line parallel to an edge with them. That's also a pair of dividers in my eyes. So with a built-in measuring gauge. So it's useful for that. Um, what I do is if I am using it as a dividers, I would just tighten that up. It just supports it in that position. So it's useful. And this steel is usually really good. They stay sharp forever. So they are handy. There you go, that's it. It's kind of all I can think of at the moment for, for these. They don't cost a lot, they're well worth having. They really enable you to work much more accurately and finish things properly and basically up your game, really, making jewellery. As soon as you've got, I mean, you should have them right from the start, right from day one of making jewellery. But if you've got a little bit of experience, I think if you bought some of these, then started using them to check over your work and then you can make little adjustments, like I was saying, like waking that wedding ring, uh, waking that, blah, making that ring. If you wanted to, if you looked at it and thought, yeah, there's a bit of a, a flat spot there and it's a bit thinner. If you start checking it round, like on a ring like this, really taking this ring and I wanted to make sure it's perfect, I would mark left, right, and in between, maybe there as well. And uh, yeah, compare both sides. Do that point, that point, and then also, don't, no point in drawing it, but you can quite easily guess halfway between your marks. And uh, you can just work your way around it. And then if it needs adjusting a little bit, you can tickle it a file or paper it down a little bit when it's getting close to the measurement you want. And uh, you can literally get it hundreds of a mil perfect. You can get the same millimeter size to a hundreds of a mil all the way around. And I am not one to blow my own trumpet, but, I've honestly lost count of the amount of rings I've made that were like £5,000 plus. Maybe even £10,000, I don't know. Over the years, there's been loads of them. Like, the bread and butter jewellery I made over like 15 years was like two to £5,000, say. And uh, rings especially, basically all the value is in the centre stone and the shop I worked at was just all mega fancy gemstones and all big diamonds and it was just crazy expensive, some stuff like quite a few things, I say quite a few handful of things were like over a hundred grand so I've certainly worked on some very expensive pieces and uh, yeah when you get up to things that are thousands of pounds the customers are very successful very discerning people and they appreciate quality they know about quality they're, they're just shopping in the most expensive shops they're going to the most expensive restaurants just anything you know about they know about the highest quality version of that and uh, it's the same with jewelry they've shopped in all the most expensive jewelers all around the world quite often so uh, you're getting judged with very harsh eyes. So you've got to, when you're making expensive things, you've got to get things perfect. So you need these, you really need these to get things like really spot on. So uh, yeah, they take you up a level, well worth the money and worth using when you're making jewelry. Uh, and that's it. Just a little quick um, little thing about a tool that I think is essential on your bench and there'll be more beginner's guides coming soon. Just what, I'll look around and just see what I think is important that beginners should know about because beginners are very important to continuing on this uh, art of hand making jewellery because like I say I feel like it's getting lost a little bit the last especially last 10 years 10 15 years maybe just with uh, laser welders uh, digital printers uh, 3d printers sorry and um, CAD design jewellery uh, it's just kind of turned jewellery into a commodity where lots of people who weren't in the trade before come into it because all this fancy equipment has now enabled them to start producing jewellery. And they're just banging it out like as a commodity just to make money. And it's a shame because I, I miss the artistic side of it. Uh, if you want a bit of inspiration for what used to be possible, just go back to, you can go on Pinterest or just anywhere online and uh, just look what jewellers used to make by hand, like in the 70s and the 60s, maybe before the fashion got a bit ugly with jewellery. Uh, proper amazing what people were doing. Uh, if you're in London, you can go to, oh, what's that place? Burlington Arcade. 
near Piccadilly Circus. Um, a lot of like old antique jeweler stuff. There's really, really expensive things in there. And it's really amazing, like handmade, massive gemstones is amazing for a start, but just really amazing handmade old pieces. Like I saw this uh, bracelet last time I was down there. Each link was like little characters playing a different musical instrument, like piano, like you know, double bass and all this stuff. But it's all done, like all hand carved and all diamonds for the musical instruments and stuff. It's really amazing. I would love to see it again. So I could really appreciate the design again. And uh, obviously, all linked up and like a very expensive piece of jewelry that was and I was quite quite impressed with that one uh, so yeah look around like those kind of places and you'll see really really amazing stuff and I don't feel like it's happening much anymore so uh, yeah we need new new students new recruits to take up hand making jewelry and then there's no reason why people starting now can't just continue continue their skill work their way up and up and up and then just actually be someone from a beginner today like in a few years, they can be someone who's really pushing it forward again and then creating new techniques, new methods, like reliving old techniques and that's really keeping it going, basically. So I think it's important and I would like to see that happen. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So end of the video. Uh, if you liked the video or anything, and uh, if you wouldn't mind clicking like and subscribe for the algorithm, algorithms, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's start making stuff. All right, see you next time, bye.